The best book for anyone who wants to know how to give da'wah is the Qur'an. And they said, no, 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 I know, I know the Qur'an. I said, no, 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 it's the Qur'an. Believe me. The Qur'an, subhanallah, brothers and sisters. The how many times in the Qur'an does it say? If they ask you about this, say to them that. If they say this, then say that. Whether you are arguing with an atheist, whether you're arguing with a Christian, whether you're arguing with a Jew, whether you're arguing with a polytheist, you will find the essence of every argument you need is in the Qur'an. But something else about the Qur'an, brothers and sisters, in respect to da'wah, it's not only a book that practically can guide you how to give da'wah, to tell you what to say. But another thing is, it's a book of motivation. It's a book of guidance. In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, Alif, Lam, Meem, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Alif, Lam, Meem, this is the book. Without doubt. In it is guidance for the pious people. The Qur'an is a book of guidance. Primarily the Qur'an is a book to guide us and to inspire us and to motivate us. And when we look at the Qur'an, and we look at the teachings of the Qur'an, and we look at the stories in the Qur'an, and we look to those people who are the best of all the human beings, the prophets. And Allah tells us their stories because they are examples for us to follow. The messengers are examples for us to follow. They are the most pious, the most righteous. And what they occupied themselves with was the best thing that a human being can ever occupy themselves with. And I've made this challenge many times before and I make it again. And even though I repeat myself, I will re-repeat myself. I invite you to read the Qur'an and find for me in the Qur'an and describe to me from the Qur'an the Salah of Nuh. The tahajjud of Nuh, the dhikr of Nuh, the sadaqah of Nuh, the zuhud of Nuh. This messenger of Allah who is an example for us all to follow. You will not find anything, and I challenge you in the Quran about his salah or his dhikr or his fasting or his sadaqah or his renouncing the world. Everything we know about Nuh alayhi salam is about what? Sorry? His dawah. His dawah. And really, if you look at the rest of the prophets, whether you look at Ibrahim alayhi salam, most of what we find in the Quran about Ibrahim is about what? His? His dawah. Most of it. Yes, there is other stuff, but most of it is his da'wah. Musa, again, most of what we find in the Qur'an about Musa is his da'wah. Isa, the same thing. Because this was the task of all the prophets. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي قُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ نَعْبُدَ اللَّهِ وَجْتَنِبُ الدَّغُودِ That Allah did not send a messenger to any nation except that he called the people Na'budullah, to worship Allah, to single out Allah alone for worship. Wajtanibud Tahut and to reject the worship of the false gods. And every god other than Allah is a false god. Brothers and sisters, are there any other prophets? to come? Are there any more prophets after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. 
Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is khatam al nabiyyin He is the seal of the messengers. There will be no more prophets. Even when Isa alayhi salam returns, he will return as a follower. Not in the capacity of a prophet. He will return as a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now if there are no more prophets, brothers and sisters, whose duty is it to continue the task of the messengers? On whose shoulders does it lie to spread the message, to give the da'wah? Whose responsibility is it? Let me ask you. Hmm? Ours. Absolutely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي عُدُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَسِيرَ أَنَا وَمَنْ أَتَبَعَانِي Say, O Muhammad, هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my way. This is my way. Allah is telling our Rasul, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to say to us, you want to know the sabil of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You want to know his way? You want to know his path? هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my way. What is it? عُدُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ I call to Allah. To call to Allah. This is our da'wah. To call to La ilaha illallah. We are not calling people to be Pakistanis or to be Bengalis, or to be Saudis. We're not calling people to be Arab, or to follow some culture, or to follow some sheikh, or to follow some madhab or tariqah. No! Allah did not ask us to call to those things. He did not say to the Prophet wasallam to call to those things. He said for the Prophet, and this is his sabil, to call to Allah. To call to Allah. To call to La ilaha illallah. This is the da'wah of all the messengers. This is the duty. This is the obligation. And you will be asked by Allah on that day about which there is no doubt. That day that is coming very, very soon, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, it's coming soon. It is coming soon. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and he was sitting with his companions and the sun was about to set. And the Prophet said, between my coming and the end of the world is like the time from the sun to its setting. And that was 1,400 years ago. So how close are we now to the end of days? The first sign of the last days was the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how soon is our death? How imminent is the end of your life and my life? Here's another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet said, whoever invites a person to a righteous action will get the reward of that person acting on that righteous action without that person's reward being diminished in the least. So if you are the means through whom Allah guides, just one person to Islam, think about it. Every time they pray, every time they fast, every time they give sadaqah, every time they say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, when they make hajj, when they read Quran, when they get married and have kids and teach their kids salah and to read Quran, you will get rewarded for it. And their kids' kids, and their kids' kids. Because you were the means through whom that person became Muslim. What has a potential for so much reward? Brothers and sisters, our life is short. Our time here is short. We have a duty, an obligation to pass on this message. To commit ourselves to make the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the highest. To save ourselves from the hellfire. 
and of course to do whatever we can to save our fellow human beings.